Now, Dallas, this is a really awesome collection. Put what knife's in your pocket? You know, one of the knives I carry the most is... Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I'm George. I'm here with my good friend, Dallas. Hi. Dallas, what you got there? Well, today I have some of my collection. You want to see it? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Open it up. Let's do it. <laughs> wow, George, I feel offended. <laughs> Man. Crack it open. Let's All see right. these knives. So, <laughs> I only brought some of what I got. I got a bunch of fixed blades and stuff at home. Um, but we're going to talk just about a few on the top row here. All right, well, let's, let's, let's load them out. Today is Veterans Day, and I'm here with Dallas, who is a United States military veteran. Dallas, tell us a little about your service. In my service, I joined in uh, fall of 2003. I went overseas. I didn't ever make it in country. I don't have a combat patch. I, I sat in a patrol car a lot, um, did a bunch of training, things like that. Spent a lot of time stateside on different bases. Um, uh, but you served in the military. Yeah, I did serve. For that, we're Absolutely. grateful. Well, thank you. I just want everybody to understand, you know, I have a huge problem with stolen valor, so I just want to make sure everybody knows that that's what I did. All right, yeah, what are so we doing? You got a quite, quite the knife collection here. Yes. And I want to hear about it. Let's start with the middle ones here. So, All right. <clears throat> I'm not going to talk about each specific knife because we got the bug out, the 940. This is our exclusive 940 with M4. Mm -hmm. Dude, and who doesn't love M4? We know George loves M4. And then, of course, I got the Elementum. And these three here, they got flitanium scales and hardware on them, updated. The new radar scales. He's looking good. Dude, it made this thing. So I'm not, I like color. I don't like just plain black. It's, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's an operator. It's tactical. Um, it is cool and it really up, ups the game on this thing a little bit. But you know what I really love about this knife? Those scales just, the, the black, so this is DLC coating, just really makes these babies pop in a cool way. They're not flashy, they're not shiny. Yeah, touch it. Yeah, touch I, it, touch I'm always impressed at how light these are. Oh yeah, and these are titanium, coated titanium. So you still got the structural uh, strength, if you will. Not that you necessarily need it on a 940, but. And then you got these other two. And so I got. These are all beat to death knives a little bit. So <laughs> I've this one here was my retirement gift when I retired from the prison. Um, I replaced it with the flitanium scales, titanium scales. Mm -hmm. And then uh, David, our workshop David, he did the Stormtrooper mask on there for me. Very fancy. Oh, I love it. And I, I was a little bit of a Star Wars freak. Yeah, I was like, is this the... So this one here, I didn't take the pocket clip off. And, and if you've seen our videos in the past that I'm in, you'll see I've featured this. This is the Death Star. Due to the contouring of the scales, we had to put it on backwards. So yeah, that's just flitanium hardware. Um, so you kind of like Star Wars. I love Star Wars and Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Yeah, I know. Give me the Hobbit comments. I'm actually a dwarf guy. I like the, I like the dwarf lore. I'm not like a. Listen here. <laughs> so should we talk about the SE3? Let's do it. Tell okay. me the story. This one's got the best knife story so, I've heard all day. I forgot completely all about this. I think it was February-ish, give or take. Uh, we'd gotten some snow, not a whole ton, and I had this. I was carrying it. It's got the clip. I had it on my belt, and I don't wear a coat usually because I'm like, you know, overheated guy. But anyway. I was trying to get my car, and I set this. Um, it was with some other stuff. I set it on the trunk of my car. My car has a little spoiler on the trunk. Totally I set this on the trunk, scrape off my car, forget about the SE3. It rides between the spoiler and the trunk for a week, frozen. I'm sitting there, and a buddy of mine's helping me clean out my car. We're just chewing the fat, and he goes, Dallas, what's this? He sees this little bit hanging out of the ice, and I'm like, what is that? I've been looking for that. <laughs> we start pulling out, we had to chip it out of the ice. And this this baby was frozen in the spoiler of my car. Now, I didn't clean it, I mean, I dried it off, but this thing, all I did was just wipe it down, SE3 and S35. No rust, no nothing. No nothing, no, nah, nothing, and the sheath held up great. I mean, I'm not, I'm not recommending you freeze it in a block of ice. Anyway, yeah, so that's the story of the SE3. All right, how about this other fixed plate over here? What you got? Tops? Sonoran, ooh, it's dirty. So here's my question on the top Sonoran. This sheath looks about as distressed as it came from the factory. Yeah. But that knife is beat to heck. So this knife and this knife here do probably 90% of my kitchen work. Okay, so it's never on your belt, but it's always getting used. So I carry it, you know, it's funny because I carry it when I'm doing like yard work and just a little barbecuing because I like to smoke meat and whatnot. So I carry these two quite often when I'm just banging around the house. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, I don't know. It just it's <laughs> handy. It's slicey with this. Uh, they call it a hunter's tip, but kind of has that um, Persian uh, trailing, trailing point. point. 
and and it's just super slicey, I don't know. When the Snorin came in, I loved everything about it, but the handle is just barely big enough for my hand. I was thinking, if my hand's any bigger than that, it might be a little uncomfortable. For but real. your hand is this large meat hook, for and real. you're like, I love this thing. So, so here's the why. thing, if, I, if I'm safe, it's almost just a three finger, I kind of hang over there a bit. But again, it's, I don't use this for, I mean, you could use this for, for skin and game or whatever you're using it for, um, just fine. Uh, if you're using hard use, you know, um, for me, it's a little, you know, I dangle off the edge here, I'd probably, That's you, when know, you grab the S grab and you get the a little SC. more handle. Exactly. But for that fall, small, minute stuff like cooking or skinning. Oh, yeah. 100%. Works just great. Splits potatoes like that. I love it. I like nice. that. Should we talk about a folder? Let's talk autos. My newest purchase. So this is Magna Cut with this nice, just deep hollow grind. Yeah, I was holding that earlier mm. and I was like, that thing would slice like nobody's well, business. And I've always said that, that ProTech has some of the hardest hitting autos and this will hold its own against my TR3 all day. That hits pretty hard. It hits pretty hard. And that's a, ch that's a chunk <laughs> blade too. And I just- See yeah, how this one goes. No, that one hits pretty hard too. It does. <laughs> they're, they're definitely in the same league for well, sure. Fun story. I mean, again, I, I've only cut a box with this today. It was kind of fun. It was super cutty. It cut that box way open. But <laughs> the TR3, when I hand it to people, I have to tell them, be very, very careful because it's snappy. And, and somebody was holding on to it and they're like, oh yeah, I know, I know. And they hit it and it goes and hits the, hits the concrete. And you can see little marks right there. Mm -hmm. A little the road rash. You're not so, seeing it in the blade. Oh, not it at speaks all. Speaks to Magna Cut toughness. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> and again, I'm sorry, all my knives are dirty. I use them. I use everything I have. I don't believe in having stuff just taking up space. Anyway, so this knife was given to me by Dave from Protec. Shot Show January. Shot Show 22. Um, I was doing a video with Dave, interviewing Dave, and he gave me this and it was one of the first TR3s. They're, they weren't in production yet with Magna Cut. <clears throat> oh, also on. In Star Wars. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> Grogu. 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 And now we're gonna break for a message from one of Dallas's greatest personal friends. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas. Hey, it's just me, George. Listen, Blade HQ has a new shareable wishlist feature. Add your favorite knives to it, share it with your friends, your family, on social media, and you'll get what you really want for Christmas. No need to send anything to the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas. Thanks, Santa. All right, last knife on the table. Tell me about it. So the last knife on the table, this in here is something you can't get unless you follow K-Pop Customs. This is the Stowaway. Rick Stowe designed this, and it's 80 CRV2 and the handle to blade ratio. At first it's a three inch blade, oh my gosh. But I won this on a giveaway and I love this. This knife does the vast majority of the food prep. And, and it's I've, got a handle that can fit the Dallas This hand. handle is amazing. I love it and it's smooth, it feels good. It's just, he does and his grinds. I wish I could just show, I wish I could just hand it to everybody out there watching and just let them touch it. Because they'd be like, you know what? This is, this is it. But uh, you'll, it, Anyway, he just does an amazing job, and his handles are just, I would, I would rank them like Bark River uh, kind of-esque um, mm -hmm. feel and fit and finish. Can't beat yeah. it. Anyway. Very nice, and a nice sheath too. These knives are all great, and this is an awesome collection, but none of these are in your pocket, and that is the highest honor a knife so, can have. So, I want to talk about what's on my hip real quick. All right. And you can get these. They're a mid-tech fixed blade from Duhara. It's like that's a Duhara grind if I ever saw so one. So he, he did this convex grind mm -hmm. and he's funny, he's like, yeah, in Japan, bushcrafting's really went through the roof since Rona, mm -hmm. since the virus hit. And he's like, oh, I didn't know, you know, you'd be interested. And I'm like, yeah, bro, I live in the mountains. Do you know I'm who you're talking to? <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's like, yeah, here, give me some feedback. And this thing here is, I'm, I can't wait to use it. It's that like convex. I'm really uh, there's vibing gonna be a with couple, this clip point too. Oh, dude, it's kind of got a Nesmuk feel. Yeah. It's like a clipped off Nesmuk almost without quite the belly. Yeah. And it's sharp. It'll shave. I got a bald spot. Hot Daniels. I only have bald spots. Only bald spots. And it's only half because of genetics. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and but the one I carry, mm -hmm. and this is the one that's currently in my pocket, and this is also some love to a dear friend, the Tour Merchant 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, please. <clears throat> so the tip you may notice is rounded off. That was my fault. Yeah, what'd you do, Dallas? Um, an electric strop got away from me. First time using it. 
Why did I pick the tour? Because Russell. it was in my pocket. And I'm like, I want to strap with this. It's like, like going oh. to driver's end of Porsche. So <laughs> Vern and, uh, and Connor from Tour, Connor Tour, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they made fun of me a little bit. And I'm going to send it back to them, probably have them just clean that up. Or I might just leave it because it kind of adds a little character. And I do, use, I do use my knife. And you know what? This thing here, I have it tuned. Um, so it's not like flicky. I mean, you can if you get some wrist action. That's not why I have it. And Connor told me, says I designed it just so you open it. Mm -hmm. Nice and smooth, but that is the one that's currently in my pocket. And Connor is, Connor and Vern both are Marine veterans. Mm -hmm. um, they served in Afghanistan. Um, I have a few tour knives and I just love it. Yeah, so my favorite thing about this tour knife is this handle back here kind of comes mm -hmm. down a little. So when it's in, it puts the edge just a little bit forward, which makes cutting easier. And that's why yeah. I love the White River Caper and the oh, Backpacker yes. for the oh, same 100%. reason. It bends down and it just angles the edge just a little bit forward, which makes slicing just that much easier. Well, it allows you to get a good grip, get good purchase on the handle. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing is most of these, excluding the, the fixed blades, most of these are in that three to three and a half inch blade length, mm -hmm. which, for an EDC knife, in my opinion, I think three to three and a half is perfect. Sometimes you can drop down to the two and three quarter and you're just fine. You can get small if that's what you're into, but. I usually keep it big. Super <laughs> freak, super <laughs> freaky. Anyway, yeah, that's what's in my pocket. And this one, the 940, I mean, all of these actually I carry all the time. It's kind of hard to say which one I carry the most. They're beautiful, Dallas. But the one that's seen, the one that gets the most work, the two I should say, or these ones here, because I cook every day. And folks, I just want to say thank you for supporting Continue Mission, our veterans. That means a lot to our veterans out there, our men and women serving. Thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice, and thank you to your family, your wives, your spouses, your husband, your kids. Uh, they pay a deep, you know, deep price as well. My family learned that as well. Anyway, I just want to thank our veterans, and uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And happy Veterans Day to everybody. Thanks, my brother. We'll see you around, Dallas. Toodles.